Yeah, everybody yeah. learns from someone else. And so I, I originally came across analysis by Ray Dalio years and years ago uh, because my research was aiming at, okay, so we're, we're building more and more debt in the system. How does this end? You know, what are the different end games for this particular cycle? Not the end of history, but the end of this, you know, period of time. And uh, I found that he had the most kind of complete explanation. Uh, and so I eventually uh, looked at that thesis and then said, well, let me um, let me dig into the numbers myself and see if I can reconstruct it and see if I can look at it from other angles. Right. So so kind of inspired by one thing and then try to add value to it. And so all of my research kept pointing in that same direction where you go through these periods of long term debt cycles. So you build up, you know, you have the short term credit cycle, you build up debt in the system, then you get some sort of event or some sort of, uh, say, monetary tightening cycle that kind of washes it out. You get a period of partial deleveraging, uh, but then you start building up debt again. Uh, and you, you you never go back to your baseline. Instead of a side wave of debt that goes sideways, it's like an upward trending sine wave. And so you get higher and higher debt as a percentage of GDP and lower and lower interest rates until you hit zero interest rates or even slightly negative, and you get extraordinarily high debt levels. And historically in history, when you hit that sort of uh, period, you get basically currency devaluation, De uh, debt monetization, and financial oppression, which is basically that you start to get large fiscal expenditures and they hold interest rates low. And so you get pretty high inflation, pretty high nominal GDP growth because the large inflation component uh, while they're holding debt well below the inflation rate. Uh, and so because basically if you have 100 percent or 150 percent debt to GDP, uh, you know, if you do the math on on interest rates, you, you can't really have structurally positive real interest rates. Uh, and so you get that period of financial oppression. And if you tie it even back to longer cycles of just kind of like debt jubilees or wealth concentration cycles that literally you can you can evidence that back thousands of years to, to ancient Greece and, you know, the, the Near East, uh, humans just go in these big cycles. And so my, my kind of research has been based on the idea that we are in one of these cycles and that most people looking at 20, 30, 40 year back tests are kind of missing the bigger picture. And I think that's starting to become more apparent, but it's, it's something that I've been focusing on for about two years now. And I think what made it even more apparent recently is now we have a kinetic war going on that you also referenced because I remember reading your material thinking, okay, this is a lot, there's a lot of parallels here, but there was also World War II. And not that that discredited that type of analysis, but now that we actually have a shooting war going on, it's like, you know, the realization is like, holy smokes, like how similar are we to that particular era? So I guess my question for you is 10 years from now, where are we? Like forget the next year, like 10 years from today, like if I'm a Canadian sitting here in the Toronto area thinking just from my family, like where are we when it comes to stuff like currencies? Like where are we? Where is the Canadian dollar, the US dollars roll the Canadian 10 years from today? What do you see? So there's that old quote that history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes, right? So my, my point with the 1940s is not that we're going through an identical period, but that is the closest period uh, that's, that, that we should be familiar with. If, if we're basically, Things that seem shocking are less shocking in financial markets to you if you are familiar with the 1940s. You're like, oh, it's kind of like what happened there. Um, and so it's basically the, the closest template we have. And then the question becomes, how do we differ from that template? What are the differences? Because it's not, it's not identical. And one example is that back then, the United States was running structural trade surpluses. Uh, and the UK, the, the existing power at the time, was the one running structural trade deficits. And so now, in, in many ways, the United States more resembles the UK from the 1940s where you know they're the they're the leading power uh and they have uh you know the structural trade deficit against a rising power which back then was the united states and now is is, is china uh, and that doesn't mean that it's going to follow the same exact pattern uh there's obviously different ge geographic differences there's all sorts of differences there uh but it, th there is kind of a, a semblance there and generally you know what i was seeing was i wasn't talking about kinetic war but i was talking about essentially wartime finance where back then you had very large fiscal expenditures that were monetized and it was very inflationary and it was very commodity heavy. And what we were seeing in response to a pandemic hitting a highly levered system, right? Because, you know, humanity's had pandemics in the past. And if you don't have a lot of leverage, it's not that, you know, it's, from a, you know, it's obviously still bad from a humanitarian standpoint, but from a financial standpoint, it's not the end of the world. But if, a, if, if the whole system's so tightly geared and there's so much operational leverage and financial leverage, that it just it can't absorb shocks, right? It could be anything. It could be a natural disaster. It could be a virus. It could be a war. If something hits a system that levered, you get these. You know, basically the system cannot let itself collapse. Credit credit cycle credit markets are based on always expanding, and that's why these these kind of recessions have gotten kind of shorter and crazier with bigger and bigger government responses. 
And so when it, when you're kind of at the long-term deaths, like you're already at the zero bound in terms of monetary policy and you get a big shock to the system, you get a massive fiscal response. And so it looked like wartime finance, even though we weren't in a kinetic war with another country. We were at war with, you know, biology, essentially. We were at war with just our, our, you know, saving our levered system. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marcus Dan.